Laidos partneris – Vytauto didžiojo universitetas. Atviras ir laisvas. Sveiki, šiandien aš norėčiau pristatyti jums Lori Anderson. Gimė į 1947 metais Jaugnės Amerikos valstijose. Amerikiečių muzikantė, dainininkė, kompozitorė, poetė, rašytoja, menininkė, išradėja. Lori Anderson universitete studijavo meno istoriją ir skulptūrą. Vėliau darbavosi meno kritikos srityje. Na, o 1982 metais pasirodės jos muzikinis albumas Big Science – atnešė jai pasaulinę šlovę ir jos gyvenimas nuo tada visiškai pasikeitė. Nuo tada jį kartu koncertavo ir kūrė su tokiais muzikos pasaulio grandais kaip Brian Eno, Peteris Gabrielis, Lūrydas. Sunku pervertinti Lori Anderson indėlį į šio laikinę muzikinę kultūrą. Jeigu kas nors ir gali būti pavadintas kultinė muzikos figūra, tai tik jie. Ir aš niekada nemaniau, kad gali ateiti diena, kai su ją bus galima pasivaikščioti Vilniuose namestyje. Hello, Mrs. Laurie. Hello, how are you? It's a big privilege to meet you. <laughs> Same Welcome to Lithuania. Thank you very much. And may I ask you for a walk? Let's do it. Okay, yeah. let's go. Okay. Wow, okay. I'm so glad you suggested this, because a lot of times I'm just seen uh, inside of a theater and a hotel, and that's it. So, so you said once that you travel between cities, not countries. Yeah. Is it true? Yeah, I think especially for, um, I'm sure it's, it's true for other people who make shoes or something like this, but for culture, it's definitely true that the contact points are um, our cities, the way culture travels, the way music and poetry and imagery and uh, is that you have more in common with people in other cities than often people in your own country so could we say that culture as we know it in the 21st century is a city culture I think it I my guess is that it's always been an urban culture that you know have people live in cities and we have a little more time on our hands we don't have to like you know do physical labor so much and and so these are the art centers and so instead of um, contacting people in the farms we contact the people in the other cities you know so it's um it's a pathway uh, that is um, is an urban path so Rio uh, you know and and Copenhagen and have more in common than Rio and Bahia you know in that sense and arriving in a new town or a new city. Yeah. What is the first thing that you look for? Um, well, right now I'm just noticing the beautiful color of the stone and the stonework. Because, I mean, first I usually look at people and, and their faces and try to see what the mood is. But you know how you can take the emotional temperature? Let's say you go into an, an office and you know You've never been there before, but in five seconds you know whether people really like being there or whether they really hate it. I try to see what the what the overall uh, feeling is in the in in a city. And feelings and probably relationships is your main thing in your well, creativity, isn't it? Well, I guess um, if I had to say what I do, um, I would say I'm tell stories. So what stories do I like? Well, they tend to have to do with uh, um, personal relationships, security. dreams, yeah, security, um, politics. Uh, even politics. Even politics, because politics is stories. You know, it's, it's politicians. You said that politicians, they tell stories. Yeah, they do exactly what I'm doing. They can really assess a situation and tell it in a way that, ah, that's my story. And one of the great storytellers is Bill Clinton. 
And he was telling a story, he said, he, okay, you have to look. And he lived some stories. Yeah, yeah, yes, he did. You started to talk about uh, American politics. What's it like being an American for you? Well, uh, today it's, um, it's sort of an interesting time right now because we actually are, it's kind of a mess. It's a, it's, so it's interesting. Yeah, it's always it's interesting. It's always been interesting actually to be an American. It's it's um, right now our uh, it's also a little bit terrifying. There's a lot of things going on in terms of technology and surveillance that are very extreme. We will have in eight years thirty thousand drones over our country. That's a lot. That's a con that's control. Yeah, that's control. That's extreme control, and so uh, this is this is a really. Um, uh, do you think we are moving towards the controlled world? Yes. Completely controlled. Yes, world? I do. I do. So, what is and could be freedom in this context? A lot of people don't. They they forget that they have a lot more freedom than they think. You know, they, they think, well, I really have to drive this certain car, I really have to dress in this suit like this, and you realize, no, you don't. Go live in a tent. You don't really have to do that. Who's making you do that? You know, there's social pressure, yada, yada, all of those things. But is anybody do it, forcing you? Not really. So you have to take your freedom, and I, I mean, that's one of the biggest things that is hardest for me as an artist, is to remember that I don't have to do this stuff. I don't have to. It's not, uh, and that I could try to think of um, another way to do things. You know, it's it's one of the few things that you can do in the world in which you're totally free. No one says now paint a red painting, now do a song about blah blah blah. So uh, it's, and everybody has that freedom. They just forget because we, you know the, it's uh, it's about what it's like to live in 21st century capitalism. You know, you think you have to have stuff. Do you? How to be an individual in such a situation? How to I think it's always been hard to be an individual, always been hard to be a person, always been hard to be a man, always been hard to be a woman. It's, it's, um, it's a challenge, you know, but uh, I think for us, um, it's a lot more standardized what is expected of people, you know, and who you're supposed to be, where you're supposed to be going, what you're supposed to be saying, all of this stuff. Uh, for example, a young boy in the United States, the models for being a man are, are pretty restricted. You could be a kind of cowboy type guy, you could be a salesman type guy, and that's kind of it, really. <laughs> Uh, so that's not much. No. No, it's not. I mean, of course, you can decide I'm going to be a poet, but th that's not the 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 but model. You, some, 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 many years ago, you decided to be a poet, a sculptor, a musician. Was it difficult? Uh, nobody ever asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, so I never decided. You know, and I just decided I'll just do whatever. You know. And then I called it multimedia artist. No, do you that's know what kind that of, means? Nobody knows what that means. But you are successful in doing that, um, aren't I, you? I'm still able to do it, so I guess that's successful. You know, it's still able to do things, and um, that's. Uh, I think it's a, a not a bad solution for what to call yourself multimedia. Why not? It's meaningless. Music. What's music to you? Well. Music is um, a way to get lost, you know, and I was just playing a couple of days ago with a, a young musician from a group called Buchan Gaze, and he designs his own um, electronics and instruments as I do, so we started making this kind of groove, just improvising, and then uh, making these giant shapes over that, and it was just, um, uh, I, 
I, I love to lose myself in something, you know, where I, I don't even you know, know whether two hours have passed or four or one or something. You know, that's, I, I go for that. I, I just like getting, getting lost. Um, also, in the intricacies of suddenly, oh, you can change the whole chord structure by just doing this, that, and that with your, you know, electronics, and, and the whole thing shifts over like that, and that, that's a thrill. I mean, it's very godlike to be an artist. You know, it's, it wasn't there, and then you put it there. You said once that you are sort of a journalist. Yeah. As a storyteller, I... I'm always looking around, seeing what's going on, because I'm not s and like that's a the presidential palace of Lithuania, that's by the way. Beautiful. Is he here? Yeah. He's here now. She. She. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. We right. have a woman for that's a president. That's right. How is she doing? She's okay. Is she popular? She is very popular and loved here. Wow, that's fantastic. We were talking about the storytelling. If you were down to one story. What that would be? <laughs> so down to one story. Um, I would try to to describe um, what it likes, what it's like to feel at that moment. I wouldn't go into the past or the future. I would try to tell a story about this exact moment. And I guess that's improvising. Maybe it's not even telling stories. Maybe it's describing. But it's back to journalism, which was. Um, I find uh, that I suppose I'm much more of a journalist than a fiction writer because I because I, you are observationist, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I, I am. That's what I what I do, and I try to see things really as they are, not like what I think they should be, what they could be, but. That's the most difficult thing, not to bring your preconceptions to something and just kind of go, what? what is that really? What is that? And that one question, if you could have only one question, what is that? What is that? Laidos partneris – Vytauto Didžiojo Universitetas. Atviras ir laisvas. Laidos partneris – Vytauto Didžiojo Universitetas. Atviras ir laisvas. You spoke about your, what you are feeling right now and how you are feeling right now. And exactly, that, that was supposed to be my first question today. Because I wanted to ask you, how do you feel now? What and who you are now in this moment of your life? This moment, well, right this second, um, I'm quite disoriented because it's, um, it's not a city I, I know. And, and I like that feeling of being lost, so I'm just... Um, uh, and I don't even know really what season it is. I mean, I know it's supposed to be fall, but is it fall? Well, it moves towards that. Yes, it's shifting. And this is so exciting when you're really not sure even what season it is or what town you're in, so this is really good. This is a good situation to be in. Um, it's a good meditation also, you know, I, I, was, I do a lot of driving now because I go from Manhattan to a little house I have in the country, so it takes two and a half or three hours, so, you know, I'm driving and like, you want to have something to think about, so someone said, okay, just change one little word about your experience, not I am driving down the road, but change it to I am driving down a road, and it changed everything for me because, you know, when you're Driving down the road, it's the road to the city, it's the road you're supposed to be on, or it's the road that you know, or it's the road that is paved with this. But if you're driving down a road, and suddenly, boom, you're, you start using your eyes, and you're, you realize, wow, I don't even really know this road so well, I'm seeing it for the first time. That's what I'm trying to, uh, uh, to understand and, and be myself, is to see things, really, really notice them, not just like, oh, that's matching my prediction, but to really notice the, the way those apples are hanging against that really bright blue sky, and this almost, it suddenly, uh, uh, it's become such a pleasure when you're not 
um, trying to map it, but you're just trying to notice it. And, and then life becomes suddenly so precious and strange and immediate. You know? It's not something that, that is part of a program, it's just something that you're being tossed into. What is love to you? Love is that, is that, is noticing. It's, it's really like, because when you, even if you see something incredibly, like, frightening or ugly or whatever, you um, uh, are acknowledging it. So um, that to me is um, a kind of love. Of course, there's a million kinds of love, but um, the, uh, and if I just hear what is love, I would probably, um, that's, yeah, that's my first reaction. It's really like um, accepting things um, as they are, not really trying to change them. And religion, what do you think of religion in the 21st century? What does it mean now? Well, I think um, when you get a chance to ask those really great questions of um, who are you and where did you come from and what is goodness and uh, if that's religion then those are great questions. What is belief? What does it mean to believe in something or someone? Uh, or, but you know, a lot of people who say, um, well, I, I believe in science because it's Sweet. facts, you know. And you think, are you crazy? Science changes every year. It's facts. It's the most changeable thing you can possibly imagine. First there's string theory, then there's another theory. You believe in that? Well, maybe, okay, that maybe what you're saying is you believe in change. You believe in different ways that you can try to grasp the world. But um, So I think that uh, our relationship to time is so complex, you know, and what we try to keep the same is uh, certainly if you were believing in science, you would, you would be shifting your opinion every second. And what is time to you? Because being a musician, yes. I think it's, it's very important to, to, to... Well, I... Oh. Gotcha. Time is, is polyphonic, you know, I, I like to see a lot of... I work in systems where you can experience time in different ways simultaneously, multimedia. So, for example... Um, you hear at a certain tempo, and then I like to maybe include some images in which you're seeing, mm, so that the sound is going, mm, tick, yeah, mm, tick, and the visual is going, wild, wild, you know. And so you see time, you see rhythm, you see tempo, uh, and when it is um, combined with tempo that you hear, you start becoming, a, you know, a sort of, um, polymorphic being, you know, you're just understanding that there are lots and lots of ways to walk through time and um, and experience it, that it's really complex. I mean, of course, we live in a sort of mono uh, version of time, like, wow, it's already almost six, I'm late, you know, just one timeline. And in fact, it's much more complicated, um, uh, multifaceted, uh, place that we live in which um, like I said back to the present um, the complexity of that is the I think the um, most amazing uh, thing to think about we're not really able to understand or remember the past very well and that we do it all through the filter of the present so that you, if somebody says oh what was um, your uh, third grade school teacher like? What was she wearing? And then that question is filtered through me asking you that and then you and you might imagine, well, what was my third grade? You know, you, know, so you, you suddenly remember a piece of your past that uh, maybe wasn't part of your memory, but then you pull it out and it becomes partly fiction, partly you now remembering it. So um, I think the... Um, it's the same, same with, you know, 
a lot of things that have to do with perception um, and is that there you're not just going back to the facts of when you were a kid you know that's impossible because being a musician a performer mm -hmm. it has to do with perception you, you mm -hmm. have to do with your audience yeah so is the is there a perfect audience for you yeah and, and what could well be that okay the audience? perfect audience I was giving a um, uh, <laughs> I was giving a speech to uh, some art students a commencement address to to them and I was feeling uh, I was waiting in the green room to do it I was wearing a, a mortarboard you know the tassel and I was like Everything was late, so it was boring. The cellist Yo Yo Ma was there as well. And I said, you know, I have this fantasy that I'm, I'm playing a concert and I look out and the whole audience is dogs. And he said, that's my fantasy too. I said, really? Okay, whoever gets to do that first invites the other one. So a couple of years ago, I did a, uh, was the director of a big festival in Sydney, Australia. I got to invite a lot of musicians and theater things, people, and so, um, and I said, also, you know, let's do a concert for dogs. And they didn't say, what's a concert for dogs? No, they just wrote down concert for dogs. So I was like, okay, this is, <laughs> this is good, we'll see what happens. So we um, did this concert, and it was, it was amazing. It was, um, I do want to uh, say, I love you if you're allowed to do Thank you. Well, she is. <laughs> <laughs> so nice, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Um, How so does it feel so to be recognized everywhere in the world? It's not everywhere in the world, but well, um, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's very nice. I, 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 yeah, we, it's we, a good way to make friends, you know. You can, uh, and you were speaking about concert for dogs. Yes, and I. So we did this concert at the Sydney Opera House on these steps. And we thought a couple of hundred dogs would show up. Thousands of dogs showed so up. So it actually Thousands. happened. It did happen. We played a, it was a short concert, 20 minutes. But anyway, it was uh, all of these dogs. And um, there were so many that they had to be on the outside on the steps. And then we had, um, it started with, uh, they, were, they were amazing dogs. They were like, a lot of dogs who wanted to rock, you know, they were like, ah. Oh. And my favorite was were the ones in the front row, they were the, like the droolers and they were just like, what is the, you know, they were just, just didn't know what it was. That is the perfect audience for you. It was, and, and they were also perfectly prepared because, you know, um, for one week, their people had been telling them, we're going to a show just for you, and it's going to be great. So they were, by the time they got there, they were like so excited. And a lot of the vets, there were no dog fights. A lot of the vets um, volunteered to come and make sure everything went well. But it was really one of the most beautiful things ever because um, it was uh, at the end, there, no, there were no fights, no barking, nothing. So at the end, I thought, let's pull out the stops. So I said, okay, okay, all the little dogs start barking. So the people get, you know, so they're, <laughs> so, okay, the medium dogs, whoop, whoop, whoop. big ones, whoop, whoop, whoop. and the sound was the most amazing sound I've ever heard in my life. You know, it was just so much joy in that sound. It was really wonderful. Laurie, are you a rebel? It depends on the context, you know. If I'm in a uh, conference of multimedia artists, maybe. If I'm in a in my hometown in Illinois, small small town, absolutely. If I go to my high school reunion, let's say I'm, I am. Um, so, uh, if I look at myself uh, and try to think of um, politically what's going on now. I, uh, yeah, I would say I, I am, yeah. I would like to change things. So 
that could be a mission an artist may have in, in today's world. I'm very uneasy with that because, you know, it's uh, a very 19th century thing to do, to say that let's make the world a better place through art. You know, you have to ask yourself, better for who? Better for you or me or your friends, my friends? What are you talking about? Better meaning what? So, um, so what it's is, very tricky. What is the purpose of art? Um, pleasure and joy and and um, awareness. I think if I had to use one word, it would be awareness to help us realize that we're alive and we can notice things. It's not this stuff that we're making. It's the process of being awake and realizing that you hear things, see things. You become uh, not just you know. We're encouraged to be, you know, consuming machines. That's our job, is to get stuff and, and build ourselves into this sort of like, let's say brand, you know, like who I'm supposed to be and you have to like look the part and act the part. And uh, instead of uh, encouraging people to actually just open their eyes and um, wake up. Wake up. That's the... Thank you. What it's about. <laughs> Thank you. You're that welcome. was a privilege. Thank you very much. That was fun. Laidos partneris Vytauto Didžiojo Universitetas. Atviras ir laisvas.